Hey guys, hope you will be doing awesomely well. This is Dr. Shivam and one thing to remind you is that the past cannot be changed but the future is still in your power. It is still in your hand. Infuse your life with action, a lot of action. Try to become good, then better and then the best version of yourself because only you can change your life. Only you can achieve, only you can put action and legs to your dream. Okay, so you have to do whatever you can because you have only this 7 to 8 months. Huh? You need PG 2020 is going to come just like a plane to you. Okay, you will not feel you have too much of time. So whatever time you have right now, utilize it to your maximum. Give the maximum effort whatever you have whatever you have given up till now for your long five and a half years collect them all and infuse it for the six to seven months and surely you will be getting your dream branch so we will be discussing ENT for this 2019 the neat pattern question so what we have seen is they have given a lot of picture type of MCQs but not to worry if you know the theory portion you will be surely getting the question right <coughs> okay so here we'll see the first question is I'll reduce the image size and the first question ask you is inspiratory strider is found in what kind of lesion so it is based upon a simple logic that where the lesion lies in case of inspiri inspiratory strider it is supraglottis in case of expiratory strider it is subglo subglottis and biphasic strider is seen in glottic lesion so this concept if you know you will be, be easily able to answer this question that in case of inspiratory strider the lesion lies in supraglottis <coughs> okay so if you see the types of strider it is inspiratory expiratory and biphasic that means biphasic means you will feel the strider you will hear the strider both in inspiration as well as in expiration okay moving to the next question one more important thing is the recent update the subglottis starts from one centimeter below the true vocal cord that means one centimeter below the true vocal cords after the glottis the subglottis start it is not just below the vocal cord as is written in most of the book so I am telling you based upon the standard books that is the Scott Brown which is followed in otorhinolaryngology the recent one identify the lesion of vocal cord in the given image so this is basically fiber optic image or you can say the uh, FOL image of the larynx showing you the lesion over the vocal cords so what type of lesion you so you must google every type of lesion as they have given this now this one this year so the may aims or pgi people or the next neat pg may ask you what type like vocal nodule how it looks vocal polyp how you can differentiate between nodule and polyp and how a papilloma looks like in the different laryngeal lesion leukoplakia over the vocal cords are also important so this one is basically papilloma so do read about recurrent respiratory papillomatosis it's a important topic for now the answer here is laryngeal papilloma so some people have associated it with human papilloma virus okay so you will comment in the section recurrent respiratory papillomatosis is associated with which strains of HPV virus because it is one of the important and the may aims may ask you may aims people may ask you this so it is the most common benign neoplasm affecting the larynx and the upper respiratory tract and uh, uh, basically it is uh, the recurrent one basically and uh, UVD we do repeated multiple surgeries and uh, nowadays we for we use the debriders micro debriders is the treatment of choice to remove this recurrent respiratory papillomatosis so patient gives a history of hoarseness of voice the voice has been changed and is hoarse in presenting with clinical condition shown in the image so by seeing the picture only you can identify the condition that it is diphtheria you can see a grayish white membrane over the oral cavity 
okay so this is particularly diphtheria caused by corine bacterium diphtheri and this can lead to serious consequences so getting knowing the diphtheria is important both regarding the medicine microbiology and now in ENT also so this is uh, the sign and symptoms you know the patient feels fever fatigue hoarseness cold painful swallowing cough and many other things so uh, this one was important diphtheria a patient presented with the following picture of tympanic membrane the most common probable diagnosis so you see how much how much clinical they have become they are giving the picture otoscopy picture of the tympanic membrane the larynx the my uh, fiber optic image of the larynx so everything is clinical huh whatever you observe in ward but the uh, the drawback is interns we as when we work as interns mostly we need we get to do only the clerical jobs and the PGT is used to do these things so you have less exposure but the premier institutes the, or the NB people wants you to know these so this is the main problem we are facing or you people are facing so this image shows you multiple or two perforation in the tympanic membrane and you know by the theory so even if you don't know that much clinical thing but you have read your theory for your notes thoroughly you will be able to answer it so not to worry anyway you have to mark it right so this is tubercular otitis media where the perforation are multiple and are associated with otodia so how the infection is getting into the middle ear so it can go into the middle ear via the eustachian tube okay so the tubercular bacteria may go from the eustachian tube inside the tympanic member inside the middle ear and can cause tuberculous otitis media <coughs> mostly it affects the children and young adult now the most common site of brachial cyst is so as you all know it is the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid so if i project my sternocleidomastoid it will be located around the upper one third of the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and if there is any cyst in the midline it can be a thyroglossal cyst so you must know how to differentiate between thyroglossal cyst and the brachial cyst moving to the next question this one is tell me the maneuver being done by the doctor to his patient presenting with vertigo and this is the picture so doctor is holding the head of the patient and moving it in some particular fixed direction so as to relieve him for the vertigo so the picture shows you Apley's maneuver so this maneuver is therapeutic that means it is done in case of BPPV benign paroxysmal positional vertigo to relieve the patient of vertigo we do Apley's maneuver so it is therapeutic maneuver okay dix halpike is the diagnostic maneuver for bppv and aplase is therapeutic maneuver so you must know ki how these aplase and simons and others maneuver look like so they have given you aplase maneuver this time now tell me the figure so again lot of figures you can see so this is accumulation of desquamated keratin in the external auditory meters can you name me the condition yes this is what they have asked identify the condition in the given image so yes it is keratotis obliterans option d now what is this condition in this condition in this rare condition what we see is we see a generalized failure of migration of the normal canal skin so external auditory meatus skin moves means in opposite direction or there is failure of the normal movement of this squamous epithelium and what happens is there is accumulation of the squamous debris and this lead to keratotis obliterans where the canal becomes widened okay with exposure of <coughs> the annulus the annulus of the tympanic membrane you can see due to the white canal okay so this is keratotis obliterans and may lead to serious condition so this is accumulation of desquamated keratin in the external auditory meatus due to failure in migration normal migration of the external auditory canal skin so this was all for the 2019 i hope you will give your hundred percent this time and give yourself a deserved seat so this is dr shivan signing off hope everything goes well and stay happy 
stay cool and stay motivated thank you